Welcome or welcome back. This is Pairs Well of Knitting. I'm Jennifer, and this is a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarn adventures, and travel. Thank you very much for joining me today. And we have a traditional podcast coming at you with finished objects, whips, and acquisitions. We will bounce right in. My very first thing is what I'm wearing, and this is a sweater from two years ago that I knit. This is the sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is a sweater that is constructed with the back yoke first, then you pick up for the shoulders, you knit forward, increasing at the neck, and you join in the round to knit the body. Once you're there, you start picking up for the sleeves and it creates this really beautiful pickup line at the back and shoulder seam. Gorgeous sweater, I've knit it twice. And this particular sweater is knit in Let Loppy by Istex, which is an Icelandic yarn. Uh, and this is in the colorway Galaxy. It is the first uh, Istex let loppy yarn that I purchased. Um, I fell in love with it right away, having that rustic quality with the long guard hairs and kept it in stash for quite some time. Finally had, I think the gumption to pair the knitting or the yarn with the pattern and it's very oversized. I really enjoy it and it's something that at first I thought I would never wear because it is so excessively oversized. However, I'm coming into it. It's really been a cozy knit and something that I've started wearing out of the house now. I've knit it with longer sleeves. I feel to kind of accommodate for that over, uh, oversized fit because if I did a shorter sleeve or a bracelet sleeve, it wouldn't necessarily make sense with the length and the width of the garment. Um, it's a great little knit and something that I am increasingly getting more wear out of, which is really nice to, to share. Uh, we will move on to finished objects. And for those of you that have joined in my Everything I Knit in 2023 Part 1, um, you will know that I'm done the ruffle sweater. I'm going to grab it right here. Um, this is a sweater that I knit with some guidance from the round yoke increases from the Novice Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. Uh, this is a combination of that mixed with my own body <laughs> where I had to increase at different rates to accommodate for my body size and not that of a particular junior person. Um, what I did with the construction as well as with the particular increases as you go down in the round yoke is I added on a ruffle. This ruffle, if you have watched the podcast for a bit, I knit a friend's baby a sweater that I was so inspired by a mushroom I saw over the summer, late summer. It was a turkey tail mushroom while I was on a walk with my mother in the ravine. And I love the sweater so much, I wanted to knit one for myself. So I finally did. Uh, to get the ruffle, I did a pearl, one pearl row to act as the anchor for the ruffle. The ruffle, I picked up all the stitches that I created with the pearl bumps and did increases as I went um, with a, what did I do? A pearl over pearl bind off to get, I feel the cleanest finish that I can with the kind of gauge that I was knitting at. And I love it. This is knit in two strands. One strand is a very thick, hardy Canadian yarn. Um, this is uh, an Aran Way gray wool. Uh, it didn't have a ball band or a tag that I purchased from the Woolworks by Heidi Wolfrat. Uh, she is in Mahone Bay and with a gorgeous shop of her own. And I paired it with a mohair. Tin Silk Mohair by Santa Garn in just their basic like Arctic white. And it's exactly what I wanted. It's exactly what I envisioned. And I feel the fit on me is really good. Um, the nice, I think, refreshing piece for me is that I didn't have to purchase a pattern and then recreate or recalculate um, 
every step of the pattern, which I feel I often do for my size and body and gauge. This I was able to free flow with the guidance of some of the um, petite knit novice junior. And once I kind of got the hang of how big my increases <laughs> were allowing my yoke to get, I accommodated for that. So it was a really simple knit to do, but very pleasing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was lovely. I don't think I did anything like super out there that is going to be a massive takeaway, except the ruffle is the star of the show. And I do feel extra fun and feminine when I'm wearing it, even paired with simple jeans. I feel for me, I'm not sure if I would wear this with a skirt or a dress as it's already very quote feminine. So I feel like to wear something more, I don't know, rustic or plain um, allows me to feel super happy up top with the ruffle. Also the ruffle placement was perfect. I was actually a little concerned that I would get it like right at the nipple line, which I think could have been a big issue. Um, but this is just hitting exactly where I wanted it on both sides, the front and the back. Um, I think that's pretty much it except what I've done, I've woven in all my ends, of course, cinched up the sleeves, because uh, sometimes I do get a bit of holes that happen, regardless of thing I do with knit two together, or knits, or even the Midori Hirose lovely um, technique she has from her ranunculus. Um, but is the neckline. What I've done is I've left the tail to my neck. Uh, right now I'm enjoying the fit, but I know with wear, uh, this sweater will start to grow and be longer, if you will, on the shoulder and less high on the neck, becoming lower as it kind of like sits with gravity. And as we, as we wear it more, I think this is what tends to happen in general. So I am debating if I'm going to do a folded down collar potentially cinching it up a little closer back to where the original fit is, or even adding in a, like a loose elastic because I really enjoy where it's hitting. Um, I think that's it, the ruffle sweater, super fun knit. And yeah, I'm enjoying wearing it. My second finished object is this. This I'm calling the electric cowl and it is electric beyond. I was generously gifted the yarn for this cowl um, by Bruna and Maria from the Knitting Loft. I will show you the ball band. It's a, it's a hefty one, um, the great quality to match the yarn, of course. So this is the Starlight wool that they have, or I should say Starlight yarn. It's a combination of 80% superwash Shinoku wool with 20% Stellina, where it's getting such a fun, shine going on and I picked this up during the holidays what a fun time to knit because I was into the sparkle for sure uh, the weight of this is 100 grams you're getting 316 yards or 280 meters uh, and they're suggesting if you hold it single of course on a US 3 or 4 you're getting about a 24 uh, state uh, stitch um, gauge swatch for 10 centimeters so they're classifying as a sport weight I've held it double. Um, as you know, I'm not a fingering weight girl. Um, even sport can be a push. So I often um, take two strands and knit them together. This I constructed, I had this really heavy set vision of what I wanted the yarn to be, which was a very close, almost like negative ease cowl to my neck to keep the cold winter from Toronto out. But also as we're getting into this really, or I should say continuing, into this really dark time um, up in North America, I like a pop of color. I do wear a lot of darks, but to have a little pop is just that little like spice of fun. And this is it. The color is electric pink and it is 100% that indeed, which again is why I was calling it the electric cowl because it is, it's such a zinger when I'm wearing it. So because I had this vision, I looked all through Ravelry, I scoured, you know, Instagram and couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. So we did what I do sometimes and we cast it on for something of a 
my own my own take on what I wanted. This is a double knit cowl. So I took the concept of double knitting that I learned when I was making my mom's headband for Christmas and I applied it to this very different construction. Um, the headband, if you remember or even was interested and checked out the pattern, you're actually knitting it, casting on here and then knitting double knitting. So your fabric or your stitches, I should say, are going this way, like vertically, if that makes sense. Um, I wanted something that was going to go pretty much top up, top down. So I cast it on the bottom here and I again made it uh, quite close to the neck to hug and keep me super cozy with, uh, with my outside coats. And then I started double knitting. So it's a really squishy, but warm and soft fabric. Again, I wasn't sure how the sparkly bits would play out, especially on my neck, because my neck and my forehead are my most sensitive areas for skin with any kind of itch or yarn uh, rustic factor. And this is wonderful. I don't feel the sparkle on my neck. I just feel it in my heart. And it's such a lovely combination. Um, I did an interesting bind off and I hope, yeah, you can see it. It's a super clean bind off. Uh, this was, how do I explain it? It was a, sl I would say it a slipped cast off. I'm sure there's this particular name um, where you basically leave your working yarn to the side and you're not casting off with that. You're casting off with the existing stitches that are already on your needle. Um, so I slipped as if to knit, then slipped as if to purl and bound it off that way. So I'm just slipping stitches over the other and then casting off through those existing loops, if that makes sense. Very easy cast off, first time I've done it and just super clean. What I noticed when double knitting in the round, which I've never done, is it creates a laddering effect. I haven't had issues laddering since the beginning of my knitting because of the techniques that I've, you know, I've learned over time. This, I didn't know what I was doing and it was such an easy solve and I didn't realize until later. Um, I just tugged on this last stitch slightly before I continued in the round again from my beginning of round and it seemed to just make it super smooth. If I had done it from the beginning, it would all be really beautiful. Um, it still is. I haven't had the heart yet to rip it out and I don't know if I will because this just to me indicates the back. And so, and I love the front. I think the front is just wonderful. So I don't think I will take it out because it just gives me a definite back for when I'm wearing it. Um, yeah, if you haven't already knit like a super simple, potentially double knit cowl, I highly recommend it. As I was walking back from an errand, it got crazy windy. We had a mini like snowstorm yesterday. I mean, for Toronto, we actually got a little bit of snow, but the wind was bonkers. And this kept me super cozy on the neck and I'm very sensitive again. So it's lovely. Thank you to the ladies at the Knitting Loft. Um, so again, just the yarn is the electric pink, uh, starlight yarn by Knitting Loft and making the fun electric cowl. Next up on the docket, sorry, my computer just went to sleep. Two seconds, please. Um, I'm gonna get into my whips and I'm gonna get into my most exciting whips and then a little whip that I would like to consult with you and then one whip as a goal for me. So let's do that. My very first whip is this. Oh. This is the Moby sweater. This is a design by Petite Knit that is an all over, and I'm being careful with saying all over, as you may know, all over cable work sweater. It is a sweater that starts out at the back and you're knitting almost a trapezoid in pattern. You are picking up at the sides for your shoulder stitches and you're joining in the round uh, after you knit the front. So there we are. I hope that's a little 
easier to see as I'm as I'm saying it. Um, it has been such a fun knit. Backstory is as I was beginning my knitting, which was about like three now, four years ago with the new year, um, I always had a dream of making, of knitting an all over cable work sweater. Um, I had a traditional like Erin sweater from the Erin Islands of Ireland um, in my head of what I would love to knit on. But it seemed like a such such a like high flying dream that I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to get there. And we're there. I'm I've just I'm thrilled to say that this is what I'm knitting. Um, it's something that is just singing to me as I'm as I'm going through uh, the yarn. The yarn is peace fleece in the color white. Oh, no, Antarctic white. Uh, it's a mush up between a blend of different wools and mohair. Here's why I chose it. And I chose this quite a while from my very first trip down east when I was in New Hampshire from the Harrisville Designs um, Spinnery, uh, was from the shop, is that it is one-stop shop for me. This is a wool combined with a mohair where I'm not having to purchase and mind two strands knitting throughout an entire cable work sweater. To me, that's a lot to manage and uh, can be quite expensive as well when you're pairing two different kinds of yarns together. Uh, this is, this is a, I believe, an Aran weight yarn and it's just, it's one strand. I mean, for me, this was, this is a win for sure. It's very sheepy on the nose. So I'm enjoying that and it's knitting up beautifully. It's a super satisfying knit. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying it for sure. It's definitely obviously a mind's on project because you're knitting through various charts as you go. And what I'm finding now, um, I did have a couple glasses of wine, so I'm not sure if that helped or hindered. Um, I joined in the round last evening and was super jazzed to just go boop, boop, boop. And I actually had to stop because on the front, I'm on one specific row. On the back, I'm on another row that doesn't match in numbers. And I'm going back on my phone between the two charts. So it's gotten a little busy in my brain. Um, I think if I were to give out some recommendations uh, would be to print out the charts if that is helpful for you. I think for me that is maybe where I might go with this so that I'm not losing my mind while my phone slides down off my lap. And um, yeah, I think before I continue on even, just knowing that maybe I will not be able to watch a movie in particular well beginning to knit in the round. I think I'm, once I get into the groove, like I did with the Press Flowers pullover, um, that'll be able to happen eventually. But I think to start, I think I'll have to get get into it first without the distractions of other, other things around. I'm really excited for this. I'm not in a race to finish it, um, but I'm definitely enjoying the process and can't wait to continue to see what it looks like. Um, just saying, to just to finish, in case you are interested, the reasons why I chose this particular cabled sweater, um, there's a few reasons for it. First, the gauge was the closest to what I knew I would be knitting with this particular yarn. The original pattern, and mind you as well, side note, side note, side note, I'm knitting the, the uh, Moby Sweater Junior. Again, I'm finding the junior sweaters are working for my body type, and there we are. This might be the 2024 finding for, for me, I'm not sure. Um, sorry, continuing on. Uh, so I chose this because of it had a variety of sizes that I felt would work with my body. The gauge was quite close because I was also debating other cable work sweaters like the Billy Slipover. There was one from Lynette all gorgeous. Um, this one was calling for, I think it is a, I know it's a mohair that they call for, and I want to say maybe a DK weight, maybe. Um, so it seems like it would be an airier fabric. 
and uh, a little less heavy in gauge, this is dense and it will be a dense knit for sure. Um, I also chose this because it didn't have, quote, real authentic cables throughout. The cross crosses here, um, they call them right and left crosses. Uh, this is kind of like a faux cabling. And so it's quite easy to knit up if, I guess if you're finding cables a little more challenging. Um, I think cables for me are okay. I cable without a cable needle. And even this is a four by four cable. I still don't need a cable needle. I think because the yarn is quite intense and sticky that uh, we're doing okay on it. Uh, yeah, so these are the primary reasons why I chose this particular uh, cable design. So again, that's the Moby Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. But of course, there's all the variations. There's the mini, the my size version, and I think there's even a men's like version of the Moby Sweater. <gasps> so exciting. Next up. Next up, I talked about in a couple episodes ago, but I didn't properly try on for you. This is another petite knit. We're going heavy on the petite knit. A whip that has been somewhat lingering uh, before the holidays for me. Uh, sorry, I hope the mic's okay. Uh, this is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I've got a little video today, so I hope we can see. I have recalculated all of the stitch counts for everything. Uh, the backstory quickly is that I cast on and knit uh, to a part of the body uh, in the smallest size of the champagne cardigan as the pattern suggested and it was ginormous. Um, it wouldn't have worked for even, I think like an oversized look, it would have been a swimming in a sea of a sweater look. So I ripped it all out. I was debating, recast it on with, I believe I went six stitches less for the original cast on, which decreases all of the size and makes a tighter size, or I should say less ease as you go through the body. I um, recalculated all of the increases for the raglan uh, stitches on the sleeve as well. And this is what I got. I'm very happy with the way the body is fitting. I'm uncertain about the sleeves. And this is what I talked about in the last episode that I brought this up. Uh, I feel the sleeves are slightly balloony. And my concern was that they were going to be overall just too thick from the beginning. So this is from the underarm all the way down. I know I can do a rip out of the sleeve to a certain point and do decreases um, even more than I already did. And you'll see with the little light bulb stitch markers, there's already quite a few um, decreases that I've had as I went. Um, but my concern was, do I even rip out all of the sleeve to where I picked up, um, where it was like the sleeve split and potentially pick up like zero stitches at the underarm? I don't know. So not that I'm opposed to redoing that, um, but I just want to be certain because it would be such a shame ripping out two sleeves entirely and then trying to finding out it doesn't work. Um, so my question to you is, how would you manipulate the sleeves if you would? Um, would you just rip out to a point and then do more decreases as you go to get a better, more tapered fit? Or would you rip back completely to before where the sleeve split is and not cast on at the underarm to cinch it all up a little better? I'm really debating. I know Lily from Curatorial Knits, who's positively divine, and I met at Rhinebeck. She sent me a really detailed um, little uh, voice DM on Instagram. This I'm highly debating on her version, and I won't share everything yet because I don't know if this is exactly how I'm going to go. So I'm hoping more feedback will continue to help me make a, a decision. Um, I'm not saying her way won't work. I think it's a fabulous option. 
but I, I feel like I, I need more people on board with how, how we would do this to get just a wonderful fit because I adore the color. I mean, this is going to be a dream cardigan when she's done. Um, so this is the champagne cardigan and I didn't say ironically, I also bought this down when I was in New Hampshire at Harrisville Designs. This is Peace Fleece in their uh, Suckland Salmon. Gorgeous colorway. I think that's it for now because she's going to get more time in the spotlight soon again. I hope I can work on it with, with your help, of course. So thank you. The last. As you know, this is not the last and final whip in this house. There are many more <laughs> lingering around the corner. Um, but here is my theory, at least. Um, I'm going to show a whip in every traditional podcast episode. And what my hope is, is either the minimal will be that I will work on it until next time and that I can show you the progress. Or, and if it's tiny or almost done, then I can show you that I'm done. So this is the motivation for myself <laughs> to uh, clean up the whip, the whip parade a bit. Um, so I'm showing you my framework bralette. This is a bralette designed by Jessie Mae Designs. This is my second bralette that I have knit on. I will be very concise in sharing because I've shared this during my whip parade um, uh, episode. Basically, I paused because the gauge became a little less tight as I was going and knitting the triangle. Uh, it's a really beautiful fabric that's created. This is a double Sunday in that orange, I believe. Super cozy, but super soft that I, I'm going to wear this to bed. This is a little bed bralette for me. Um, but yeah, I just have to rip this out, rip out the triangle, and then re-knit the triangles, Zuh. and uh, do a little eye cord. It's not going to take a ton of time. This is why I'm sharing it, to give myself the motivation and uh, discipline to finish this before we hopefully see each other next time, or at least knit on a bit, because we still need joy in our knitting. Accountability we're accountable outside of our knitting life. I'm just gonna pick up the ball that fell. Okay, so that is the uh, Framework Bralette by Jessie Mae Designs. That is it for my whips that I'm showing you today. We are interrupting this podcast with a very special package arrival. I have just had this fantastic little package arrive from Germany from Bakes and Pieces. This is a prize that I won through Kalka Knits, Kelly, who's a knitwear designer, and I was graciously awarded this prize as a random draw on Instagram. I've worked with Vivian to get the package here with no issues from Germany so that I'm able to construct my own leather goods bag. No tools necessary outside of what's in this package. I'm so excited. So we're gonna get right into this with the Swiss Army. Thank you, Vivian. <clears throat> Beautifully packaged. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure it doesn't fall. Look at this beautiful packaging. I'm loving all of this and the contents inside. Hey, here's the leather I chose. I'm almost drooling. And it smells divine. If you are in love with leather smells, I do love, as you know, I love a good sheepy wool leather as well. Look at this. Oh, are you kidding? Fantastic. The color I chose, I should talk about the bag. <clears throat> the bag I chose, because they have multiple bags that are up for grabs. Um, they're all do-it-yourself bags. You don't need additional tools. Um, outside of what they send with the bag packages. It's a DIY kit. Oh, this is um, the modern saddle bag. And the color I chose, modern cognac, I believe. So a lot of modern going on. That's why I was second guessing myself. So it's a modern saddle bag and the modern cognac colorway. Um, I also ordered a strap. So you can get different strap sizes to go with your bag. I don't even know what these are. <laughs> Bits and bobs and pieces. 
Okay, and this is, in general, this is the shape of the bag. So it's just a really beautiful, simple structure of this bag. <gasps> what I'll do is I'll insert a photo of the bag that they sell online. Vivian has offered our viewers a generous discount as well with the code PAIRSWELL10. With this discount, you get $10 off a $100 or more purchase from her Bags and Pieces website. Um, so the code is PAIRSWELL10 for your $10 discount if you're interested in making your own DIY leather bag yourself. And as makers, I think this is going to be a great time. Um, thank you so much to Vivian, and of course, thank you so much to Kelly as well from Cook on Nuts. Thank you. And I think I will do a little blurb um, about the acquisitions. There were Boxing Day sales here in North America for yarn at many shops. Um, I decided to purchase some yarn. Some is absolutely crucial in what I'll be casting on uh, in hopefully the close-ish future. And some will be a cast on within the year. First off is this. This is uh, the Knitting Loft Mohair. It is a beautiful, very new to me, but very stunning mohair that I chose and had help with color matching. And I'll show you what it's matching with. I'm th so thrilled. And perhaps if you'll be watching, you may know exactly what it's going to pair with. Uh, it is dust. They call it dust. 70% uh, kid silk mohair, and, or sorry, I should say kid mohair. This is a ball band. And 30% silk uh, for the 50 grams, you are getting 473 yards or 432 meters. This I purchased on Boxing Day for 20% off, and I got two of these to go with my Nutidin. This is the Nutidin yarn that came in before the holidays and uh, is my first time purchasing Nutidin, which is an unspun, uh, minimally treated yarn from Sweden. And it's in the colorway carrot. <laughs> I forget the the word for this this yarn or the colorway. I'll include in my show notes. I felt like the pairing was wonderful. This is a little, I would say, muddier, um, airing on the side of like orangey brown. This is a little more bright chipper orange, and I'm hoping um, that the bright will help the moneyness of this orange. I think if we just look at this, it's it's a really beautiful color and it absolutely is. Um, but then I see this and this is more my jam of a brighter orange. So that is the hope. I think it's going to pair lovely. I have so many different options in my brain. Uh, I've been doing a lot of poking around since I received this yarn on specific unspun sweaters. I do know from knitting with unspun before that we can knit any sweater in an unspun um, if it's meeting gauge, <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm talking about meeting gauge. Um, but I, I wanted something maybe particularly for unspun. I don't know if that's happening. I've got some options. Um, I won't reveal what they are because I'm curious to see what you think, um, what pattern, and I'm talking sweaters, I'm open to pullovers, I'm open to uh, cardigans, what would you believe that would just scream this orange carroty colorway? And oh, my mistake, this is the orange crisp colorway um, in dust. <sighs> I'm torn, I wanna knit everything, and this is very special to me as it's my first knitted in yarn. I'm overwhelmed and really excited. So hopefully you can, you can help reaching out. <laughs> Please, lots of help today. Next up in my cart, keeping with the orange theme because orange is my jam. Uh, we're looking at Sanuscorn line. I know, I am getting into plant fibers. This will be maybe casted on before we leave for our next trip to somewhere a little cozier. 
And this is the objective, is that with the fun color, maybe I'll knit with a plant-based yarn. This component, or the composition, I should say, of a line is 50% bamul, I think bamboo, I don't know, 33% uh, viscose, and 14% linen. Uh, it was the color that drew me in. I got so excited about it. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm motivated to knit with plant yarn and perhaps be a changed knitter with growth into the plant yarn world. I don't know. I've got some ideas where I'm thinking of some kind of a uh, little tank top camisole idea. Nothing with lace motif in it for me because I'm so loose of a knitter. It will be a stockinette uh, situation. But um, yeah, I'm not opposed to having it as like just an inside, like, you know, intimate, quiet situation for the tank top and camisole. Um, I don't need to go outside in it. So the I'm pretty open with the coverage factor, uh, but perhaps it will be something that I'll feel comfortable in uh, walking out of the house. We shall see. So if this doesn't get, get cast on before we leave for our next trip, um, it will be brought with me to cast on within the trip. And the last thing I bought is this. Uh, I bought many balls of this beautiful yarn. Um, again, this was 20% off during Boxing Day, so we're feeling okay and it's very purposeful. This will be used for the next sweater for the love of my life. I will tell you my exact knitting plan with this. This is Galliat. Uh, it is a French yarn brand by uh, Dererum, although I cannot find it on the ball band, but it is. And it is in the colorway granite. It's 100% wool and it is a chunky ball. It's 250 meters, um, 100 grams. And it's, uh, what's the word? I always get it mixed up. I think it's a woolen spun. So it's really light and airy. And it's something that I've wanted to knit forever with, um, but never, I think, took that leap or, or the step, and I did. Um, so the color was chosen by the love of my life, uh, and this objective is to cast on the Zipperman sweater, which is a very different construction than anything I've ever done for him, or period, uh, will be the second sweater that he will have knit, and the objective will be to finish it before next Christmas. So I'm giving myself fully a year-ish to cast on, if I have to modify, and gift. That is a thought at this point, but we're in January, so we shall see. Beautiful yarn, super squishy, can't wait to cast this on. But you'll, you've seen, I've, I've got quite a bit of other things. And last but not least, we'll be finding a treasure from the bookshelf. So this is our second time that we're doing this, where we are picking off one treasure from the bookshelf to do a little show and share about. I was thinking of these little cute creatures right here. They are from an artist in Toronto that I cannot recall the name of, however, Hopefully I'll get into the show notes by the time I post the video. I'm just going to place you back here with me. All right. <laughs> so on the bookshelf, we have a variety of objects from all kinds of things. Uh, we have a number of these little female creatures from that Toronto artist that hopefully I'll be able to, to include in the show notes. And he, he's a character himself. He is at the one of a kind show in Toronto. I think most seasons, although I did not see him in the last um, show that I attended. And he makes these silly but super fun little creatures. So of course I'm showing you his two-headed sheep. Like such a silly little tail on the butt there. And super cute. Slightly fitting for our knitting community. Um, another fun feature, he is made out of Fimo. But this particular Fimo, the white, is a glow-in-the-dark Fimo. So he has a slight green alien halo as he hangs out on our shelf. Um, so just a little good time. And uh, yeah, every time I go to the One of a Kind show and see this dude, this artist, I pick up another one of his little creatures to uh, join the pack and sit on the rock. 
I want to thank you very much for coming by today and for listening to part of the knitting journey that I've been on recently. Um, if you are finding that you have enjoyed this episode, I invite you to click uh, the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you are finding yourself even more adventurous, I invite you to click on the link below to my Ko-Fi account where I've set up a, uh, a section there where you can donate a coffee to me. I very much appreciate it and I want to thank those that have already done that where they have donated. A very big thank you to those people and an even more gracious thank you to people that have started becoming members. I'm so excited and thrilled and understand that this is going above and beyond even just watching and liking and subscribing, which I already feel very flattered from. Um, but this is people clicking and going out of their way to make a donation. I very much thank you. All right, with that being said, I hope you find great joy in your knitting today. And until next time, thank you. Mm -hmm.